Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast. Today we're joined by Pat Mulroy. She's a senior fellow of Brookings Mountain West for the whole show on the all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. The holidays are upon us. A time of celebration, family gathering, and gratitude. There are gifts to be wrapped, feasts prepared, love shared, and memories made. Life is precious, so let us cherish each other and all that we have. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We thank you for letting us enrich your lives and thank you for your support throughout the year. Happy Holidays! R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmakers tapings in Las Vegas are brought to you by the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always delighted to welcome back to the program Pat Mulroy. She is senior fellow at Brookings Mountains West, a board member of Wynn Resorts, and the former head of the Southern Nevada Water Authority. Uh, always a pleasure to have you back. Thanks, Sam. I love being here. Thank you. Um, so you've read the comments of uh, Brad Kroll, the director of Conservation and Natural Resources. Um, what were your thoughts uh, on his point about critical mass uh, being reached regarding the water supply here in Southern Nevada? Well, I, I thought I read that he said that we're reaching the critical mass throughout the state of Nevada. Correct. Um, because the growth in Northern Nevada has been quite extraordinary here in the last several years as well. Um, do you know how many times I've heard that, that Southern Nevada has reached the critical mass and Southern Nevada can't grow anymore? And guess what? This is a free country and people buy land and they build homes and people keep moving here. The global population is going to be 9 billion. Why do we think that Nevada is not going to get a, some of that 9 billion people? So um, Marilyn Kirkpatrick was on the show, uh, the chairwoman of the Clark County Commission and also uh, is uh, the uh, chair of the Southern Nevada Water Authority these days. And she was very concerned about these remarks. And one of the things she mentioned was that uh, these kind of remarks could affect the bonding capacity for the Southern Nevada Water Authority. What are your thoughts on that? I think an offhand comment by the Director of Conservation and Natural Resources for Nevada won't necessarily have a glacial effect on our ability to sell bonds. It might evoke some more questions I remember during the recession um, when we were also in the throes of the worst, some of the worst years of the drought, I had to answer all the same questions. That's why the 50-year water resource plan for the Southern Nevada Water Authority is so important. Um, but were those comments unwise that Mr. Kroll made? Absolutely. I mean, I had to chuckle when he said, the Colorado River is not sustainable. Sam, I cannot tell you how many times I've scratched my head 
over the last 30 years on how little understanding the State Department of Nat Conservation and Natural Resources has about the Colorado River. So if you had a chance to address Mr. Crow right now, what would you say to him? I would say, yes, Nevada has a water issue. Nevada has always had a water issue. We have been fortunate that we've been able to manage around it. I don't think the problems are insolvable, um, neither in northern Nevada nor in southern Nevada, but will they take a change in attitude and will it take um, putting as many um, great innovations to play as you possibly can? Yes, and it'll take a large degree of collaboration. Um, the governor has made it clear that he is not interested in bringing water from eastern Nevada down to Clark County. Um, the Commissioner Kirkpatrick said something to, to the extent of we don't need uh, the water from eastern Nevada. What's your thoughts on that? Well, obviously, the 50-year water resource plan for the Southern Nevada Water Authority has it in there at the end, later in, in later years. I know that our mission has always been to avoid building that project. Um, it's never been the number one manifest destiny for the Southern Nevada Water Authority. And it, remember when we first filed in 89, when we took our 50-year resource plan to the board in 1990, there was no Northern Nevada water in it whatsoever. We had signed our first round of agreements on the Colorado River. Um, Bruce Babbitt was exiting as Secretary of Interior, and we had enough agreements in place that we had a robust water supply from the Colorado River for the next uh, 50 years. Then came 2002, and the rest is history. It has always been the ultimate backup project. And I think that in many ways, well, it's a little probably a little bit more contentious than the um, Delta Water Project in California. But I think there is a box, a linear box that water managers across the country have to get out of, which is that I have water right number X and I can pump, let's hypothetically say, 100 acre feet a year, and I am going to take 100 acre feet a year. Well, no, you're not, not in a climate change world. You are going to leave water behind, you're going to recharge, you're going to use surface water to the greatest degree possible, you're going to use excess surface water to recharge, you're going to overbuild facilities so that you can capture the big gulp or when you have the flood events, the major storm events, and then you're going to have a backup supply. This linear thinking that we are only going to be able to pump what we have a water right for, and by golly, we're gonna pump it every single year, is sheer and utter nonsense. It cannot work. And if you look at any logical adaptation strategy, it's going to, rely on wet years to create storage and cr rebuild reservoirs, rebuild groundwater basins, so that you have a savings account, a savings bank that you can dip into during the tough years. We don't know how they're gonna play out. We know there's gonna be as much precipitation on the planet as there's always been. But where it falls, when it falls, and how it falls, is all gonna change. Just changing the Colorado River from snowpack to rainfall makes all the difference in right. the world. So right now, given the level of uncertainty, given the enormity of the challenge, to take any option off the table is insanity. You can't at this point. You can have those you would prefer not to embark on, but you can't take any option off the table. So um, one of the things that uh, is constantly brought up is these desalination plants now off the California coast. Yes. Um, uh, uh, but how would that work? Um, would you have to rework the Colorado River Agreement? No, no you don't have to rework the Colorado it River It would be interbasin? The, the level of change that has already come about um, in the 2007 guidelines 
gives you ample bandwidth to be able to enter into those kind of agreements um, between minute with the last minute with Mexico you can do an exchange with Mexico you can do an exchange with California the challenge becomes when the river is dry the challenge becomes because you do it through storage in Lake Mead so it will have it will happen it absolutely will happen it's inevitable that one day we will be th doing virtual exchanges on the Colorado River and quite frankly the the ocean is a very logical next place from which to take the resource from um, how does the Imperial uh, Valley Water District play into this because they seem to be the ones that don't want to play with the other users no actually they do I mean we we love to beat up on the Imperial Irrigation District I mean I was led the parade for a long, <laughs> for a long okay. time, beating them up. Um, they basically work out of a position of fear. And they have this unfortunate habit. I mean, they were in this agreement in, you know, uh, the concert, last conservation agreement that was signed. They were in it. And then, as usual, they created a Christmas tree. And they tried to leverage agreeing to that to other things that had absolutely nothing to do with it, um, mostly around salt and sea money that they wanted from the federal government. <coughs> and it was <clears throat> one ornament too many. They will be back. They better than anybody understand that there have to be regional, multi-state, multi-jurisdictional um, arrangements on the Colorado River. So they'll come around. It's just going to take them a little longer. All right, let's take a break. More with Pat Mulroy when we come back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. Because of UMC, there's a wide open road ahead of me. Because of UMC, she can grow up with her twin sister. Because of UMC, I'm here to help you. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Pat Mulroy. She's a senior fellow at Brookings Mountain West. So into this mix of things, I interviewed Senator Reid yesterday and brought this topic up to him. And he once again reiterated what he has said before, uh, which is that the water that's being used in eastern Nevada uh, is to water alfalfa, and that that is a waste of water and it should be used to flush the toilets on the Las Vegas Strip. Well, that's his opinion. And I respect Senator Reid tremendously. Um, he's not the only one that holds that view. I have come to the conclusion that 
what is going to be critically necessary in the ensuing years is an ag urban partnership. And I don't think throwing hand grenades is the way to create that kind of a partnership. Look, I think we need to be quite realistic that there are a lot of technology manufacturers that use as much, if not more, water than some agricultural producers. I mean, remember, one cell phone battery is 1,300 gallons to produce. Multiply that by the number of cell phone batteries around the world. There is no one villain. There is no, there is no such thing as one use that is better than another use. It's going to have to be a balance. Let's turn our attention then to northern Nevada because mm -hmm. you've spoken of water shortages there. Now, the Truckee Meadows Water Authority also has an extended uh, drought conservation plan. Yes. And if I'm correct, they've been banking, if, if a developer comes for water rights, they have to buy one and a half uh, acre feet for every acre feet that they need, and that water is taken out of agricultural and put into right. a bank. We don't have any agriculture down here. C correct. Problem number one. Correct. But um, where do you see the shortage of water in northern Nevada? I think the Truckee is going to be as volatile, if not more volatile, than the Colorado River. Really? Because it has less storage. It's just that simple. And I think Tumwa understands that. Um, they have become very good and very sophisticated in balancing their various resources, both groundwater and surface water and reclaimed water. I think you're going to see them on the cutting edge of some technologies to um, recharge treated wastewater into groundwater basins. Um, they are keenly aware. They have a robust water plan um, and they know how to move the water around to satisfy all the various TROA members, all those dependent on TROA. So that's um, the Truckee River Operating Agreement. Truckee River Operating Agreement. Um, I mean, that's why before we started, we talked about the wastewater pipeline coming from the Reno Sparks area over to Trick in Story County to Tahoe Regional Industrial Park over there. Um, and I'll tell you it that is the kind of innovative approach that is going to make all the difference in the future. I mean I can't tell you how proud I am of all the people that worked on that particular agreement because for city and county representatives in one county to allow their wastewater to go to another county and when you say use wastewater for industrial purposes what an ideal partner um, these kind of companies make for exactly that kind of innovative use. And, and, and one of the reasons that, that they were uh, in agreement to do this was that they would not have to expand the sewer plant, correct? The benefit to Sparks was that they did not have to expand the sewer plant. On the flip side of that, Switch is going to have to build, with their partners, is going to have to build a massive multi, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of water treatment facility in order to bring that treatment, in order to bring that water quality to a point where they can use it um, in their cooling system. And they will have zero liquid discharge. There will be no lost water in that system. Lance Gilman on the program has talked about uh, a concept that's being uh, floated at, uh, if you'll pardon the pun, um, up at TRIC um, in, in terms of turning gray water into drinking water quality level. Uh, are you familiar I with guess, that? Yes, but I think we are, we are way far away from that. I am not sure the, regula the regulators can't even completely get comfortable with recharging it into the groundwater basin where you have at least some dilution. Um, but going, can you technically do it? Yes. It is absolutely technically feasible to take uh, gray water and even wastewater and turn it into drinking water. I mean, at the end of the day, every drop of water that we consume today has been around forever. Right. I mean, I've kiddingly said to you, I think in the past, it's all been dinosaur pee, right. you know, <laughs> at some point. So it is the fear factor. It's what we don't know that might be hidden in that wastewater that we haven't even recognized yet that could potentially be a real health hazard. 
Um, so the water community and the regulators are very cautious about traveling that path. Um, that's why taking that water and treating it for industrial uses, given the enormity of the industrial uses, makes all the sense in the world. Um, we see Northern Nevada on a 20 to 30 year growth pattern mm -hmm. um, that seems almost irreversible at this point. And personally, I think it's a, a great thing. But where do you see a water crisis coming if we don't have additional storage? On the, on the Truckee. A multi-year severe drought on the Truckee. And within, uh, within what time frame do you believe? I, I can't answer that. Who knows? At this point, who knows? I mean, I think they're what many conservationists would say they're slough in the system. Um, if you could turn off all the outdoor watering during crises like that. I mean, I have friends who run other water utilities up and down the Colorado, and they actually use their outside water as a water bank. Um, it's in use when it's there. Um, actually recharging groundwater basins, but it is their first level of attack when they have to absolutely start cutting back. And so could Tumwa shut off all the outside watering if things got really dire for a period of time? Yeah, they could. I lived in Marin County when we were down to 35 gallons of water a day. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. Let's it is possible. Let's take another break. We'll come back with a whole different topic right after this. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Are you a homeowner who's interested in remodeling or building a home? At Design Outdoor, we can show you how adding natural or manufactured masonry stone can add beauty and value to your home. And we refer only the best contractors. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bargain because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Pat Mulroy, and we're going to change our job title here to a board member of Wynn Resorts. Um, what did you think of the Gaming Control Board and the Gaming Commission's uh, report on uh, protecting women? Um, Jan Jones felt it was adequate, it was just codifying what already existed. Well, I think she's right. It was just codifying what already existed, and that's why there were voices up and down the strip, not Wynn, that were saying we don't need it because it's Im embedded in other laws and regulations, both at the federal and the state level. Um, the reason Jan said that is Jan's become an activist. Um, and I'm becoming an activist right along with her. I think for her, it's m not just protecting women, but removing those invisible glass ceilings that have been there for so long inside the corporate structure and providing pathways for women to be able to succeed in the corporate world. So I'm, listen, I'm right behind her as her lieutenant, 
fighting that battle. But I think what the gaming regulators did was as far as they could go at this point. And what do you think is the next phase? I don't know whether it'll be needed. I'm hoping it won't be needed. I mean, I am hopeful that there's an evolution happening as more women go on corporate boards, as the conversation changes in the boardroom, as more women get into executive leadership positions and go into the C-suite, that the conversation will organically change and that no one need come in with a heavy regulatory hand to enforce what really shouldn't have to be enforced. And that's where we have to leave it. Pat Mulroy, never enough time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sam. And we'll be right back. Nevada Newsmakers tapings in Las Vegas are brought to you by the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culpa Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they will. St. Ives Florist for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance. Custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in Northern Nevada. And we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you on the next broadcast.